Uh, so, hi everybody. So, today we'll talk about the uh, subject of topological string theory and uh, the physical aspects of the topological string theory. Uh, this talk is aimed for uh, late undergrad and early grad students, so like it's not that technical. Uh, I mean, the definitions and stuff like that are really brief, so, uh, uh, and uh, I have uh, the comments that I have actually about the talk is uh, the references. I did not actually put uh, the references here because I wanted to put the relevant paper that that are uh, important for the talk in the paper channel of the of the uh, of our server. So I could like put uh, 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 like a resume and uh, my my views on the paper and like so we could keep that in the server. So that's the only thing I have to say. So let's start. So this is uh, our uh, plan for today. So a uh, general introduction. I will, come, I will come back to the plan in more details. So we'll start with the general introduction. So uh, I guess by now, everybody knows the uh, story that uh, in physics we have the problem of uh, 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 general relativity and quantum uh, and quantum field theory. How we can mix between them and how we can like uh, 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 have a theory of the quantum gravity. So I'm not going to talk about that. What I'm going to talk about is uh, what is the role of string theory in that. So string theory, uh, as many people know, is a uh, also a theoretical approach which kind of like tries to to do this exercise to give us a quantum a theory of quantum gravity and it kind of incorporates both quantum gravity as well as supersymmetry so uh, string theory uh, regularized field theory by introducing a new scale known as the string scale and it kind of naturally incorporates gravitation also as i said it it has supersymmetry on it uh, here between parentheses just for terminology string theory i mean super string theory which means bosonic strings plus supersymmetry equal to uh, 10 dimensional space time, uh, no tachyonic instabilities, bosonic sector, and fermionic sector. If I'll have to talk about the bosonic strings, I will just say bosonic strings. And if, when I'll have to talk about topological strings, I will just have, I will just say uh, topological strings. So just for the terminology. Uh, so, uh, as I said, like uh, string theory, like naturally incorporates the gravitation by the introduction of the new scale that is uh, known as the string scale, and it's also a supersymmetric theory, which uh, uh, which gives us a framework for constructing supersymmetric models. So. How do we see things in, in string theory? So the one-dimensional trajectory of a particle in space-time is actually replaced uh, by a two-dimensional uh, orbit of a string denoted by a word sheet. So uh, mathematically, uh, uh, this word sheet is actually a Riemann surface, which means a complex manifold with a complex dimension one. Uh, here, for the people that like the undergrad people, some people that are not familiar with string theory, you can do a parallel with the uh, the uh, quantum mechanical case, uh, where the uh, introduction of the Planck constant H bar uh, is responsible for passing from classical to quantum physics. So, in a similar manner, or right, in string theory, we introduce like the uh, we introduce the a new fundamental constant. I hope you guys here can see my my. Uh, my mouse, so we introduce this new fundamental constant, which is called the parameter for the torsion of the string alpha prime, all right? Uh, so uh, this alpha prime, uh, which is the uh, parameter for the tension uh, of the string, uh, uh, because of this, it turns out the, the gravity is kind of regularized as it is no longer possible to probe space time beneath distances of order of the square root, <coughs> square root of this uh, alpha prime. So in other words, it means that there is an absolute minimum uncertainty in length. Uh, and classical field theory, and especially, especially uh, uh, general relativity, arises in the limit where this uh, alpha prime actually tends to zero. All right, uh, but like I said before, it turns out that string theory is only consistent in uh, uh, space-time with ten dimensions. Uh, because for the bosonic string theory, we have a 20, 26 dimensional space-time, and we have only bosons plus tachyonic uh, uh, instabilities. So, since string theory is only consistent in a ten-dimensional space-time, right? This actually makes it uh, unavoidable to compactify the theory on a six-dimensional compact space to establish contact with our observed four-dimensional world. But when we do this compactification, all right, there are some 
let's say like uh, some rules that we need to follow all right so uh, for example we need to pre to preserve the amount of supersymmetry relevant for phenomenology uh, uh, so when we do that we have to put some conditions on the compactification manifold uh, and uh, some of these conditions are like that the manifold the compactification manifold should be complex and color and they allow for one covariantly constant spiral so and these conditions actually are what lead to a vast number of solutions known as Calabio manifolds. So this is how kind of Calabio manifolds pops up in string theory is actually from the conditions that we put, uh, we force on the uh, uh, compactification manifold to preserve the amount of supersymmetry while, while we're doing the compactification. Uh, each such space leads to a different four-dimensional particle content and interactions, uh, and thus to a different physical vacuum state. Well, there is a conjecture that all these vacuoles are connected through uh, the notion of uh, extremal transition, but anyway. So, one of the major challenges of uh, uh, string phenomenology is, uh, is to find the right vacuum describing our universe at the current uh, state of evolution. Now, String theory suffers from some drawbacks, all right, uh, from the conceptual point of view. So uh, it was known, and still known now, that there is not only one string theoretic construction, but there are actually five consistent theories at once. Actually, we have them here. So there's, for example, there's type one string theory, which is composed of an open, unoriented closed strings, has n equal one super, uh, supersymmetry, gauge group SO32. Uh, we have the heterotic SO32 SO string theory, or we just call the heterotic string theory, the E8, E8 string theory, and we have these two guys here, type 2A and type 2B, which are important for us, right, in this talk. So uh, type 2A, we'll, we'll talk about them in, in detail later. So, uh, but in, uh, so we have like this kind of five theories, which, which was back at the time, drawback. Uh, but in, in 95, I, th I think, or in the 90s anyway, it, it became clear that this, this, these five theories are actually connected through a chain of duality. So, for example, type 2A, type 2A, and type 2B here are actually connected through uh, mirror symmetry. We'll see about that. Uh, so, these, these two guys are connected through a chain of uh, dualities and to an 11 dimensional theory called M theory, which is only known in its low energy limit as an 11 dimensional supergravity. Uh, this picture also involves the existence of objects that are known as uh, DP brain, right? We're not going to go in through this, which are like p dimensional analogs of the string, but uh, they have like uh, some other di different properties, right? Uh, now, uh, the best understood duality that we have in string theory. Uh, is mirror symmetry, all right? Uh, there are other other dualities in string theory that are as important as mirror symmetry. For example, uh, there is like the duality between M theory and this guy here, type 2A, which is uh, actually uh, half of what define M theory, all right? There is, for example, the duality between uh, M theory on Z2 orbifolds and type 2B on K3 fi vibrations. Uh, uh, there is uh, the duality between M theory and F theory. F theory is the theory that we use like to uh, for uh, to understand the string theory uh, uh, in the in the non-perturbative regime and stuff like that, but let's say that one of the best understood like uh, uh, duality is is uh, is mirror symmetry. Uh, so, uh, which relates actually, as I said, this type two A and type and type two B. Uh, so we say that like type two A compactified on a Calabio manifold M is uh, is dual by via mirror symmetry to type two B uh, on a Calabio W, and W is the mirror of M. Uh, if we want to see things like in a really, really, really simplified manner, uh, we can take, for example, the case where M is a circle of radius R, all right, and W, which is the mirror of M, would be like the uh, like a circle of radius alpha prime here, right? This alpha prime uh, uh, divided by R. So. As I said, like this symmetry says this, like uh, uh, the two theories compactified in uh, such a way admit the same particle spectrum and four dimensional physics, right? Uh, there, as I said, there are other symmetries, for example, one that I did not, uh, uh, that, that I did not talk about, which is really important is the, uh, uh, the duality between uh, this guy here, heterotic 
string theory and type 2a right which is a symmetry of completely different nature uh, than the mirror symmetry and it's really also a really important uh, uh, duality so here, like to test uh, these dualities, all right, uh, uh, BPS says, all right, BPS says, actually, if you guys see here in the in, in the uh, in the plan, there is BPS says. So BPS says becomes very important because they are actually the only says in the theory which prevail and are protected against corrections, even even in the non-perturbative regime. Uh, so if we go back here. But string theory also like has uh, like some uh, some major breakthroughs and has made some uh, there were like some good results made in string theory. For example, the calculation of the Bekenstein Hawking uh, entropy for supersymmetric black hole. We'll talk briefly about that in terms of a string theoretic microscopic description. So such an entropy calculation is possible for black holes which are extremal in the sense that their charge and their mass are in a fixed relation. Uh, and on the string theory side, right, this actually involves uh, accounting of uh, BPS states, which are realized as, uh, as uh, uh, which are realized on the string, uh, as D brains wrapping certain circle, circle cycles of the complexification manifold. Uh, another important line of research in string theory is uh, the construction of four-dimensional supersymmetric vacua by choosing a certain compactification geometry, right? For example, this involves calculating the four-dimensional effective action together with uh, its superpotential and prepotential, and blah, blah, blah. So uh, now, to do this, like to, to address this, this two, these two examples that I talked about, black holes and, uh, and like supersymmetric uh, 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 four-dimensional uh, mm -hmm. theories, there are many, many tools, many uh, point of views, many approaches, and one of these uh, approaches is actually topological string theory. So, uh, what is topological string theory and why do we care about it? It's uh, actually it's a simplified version of the uh, critical string theory, uh, in which the path integral localizes uh, uh, on the uh, topological subsector of the theory. So uh, physically, it's, it's a simplified approximation. Uh, so within the sigma model representation of the critical string, the path integral is an integral over all possible um, uh, over uh, over all possible uh, maps uh, uh, of uh, to two-dimensional worksheet to the target space, which is in general uh, a complex three-dimensional Calabrian manifold tensored uh, with Minkowski space time. Uh, and in topological string, the space of integration is kind of reduced to the space of the distinct classical solution. So we see here that it's only an approximation of like the, the original theory. So one can ask, uh, why should we look at such a simplified version of the original theory? So there are many, many answers. The one that I'm thinking of right now, uh, uh, first, it is, uh, it's a standard formulation all right, in its standard formulation, superstring theory uh, exhibits an infinite number of fields and particles, an infinite dimensional symmetry algebra, which is only uh, vaguely understood, uh, and where uh, infinite uh, dimensional, uh, and uh, where a lot of the symmetries are broken. So actually, there's a claim that the topological version is just uh, another phase of, uh, of uh, the physical theory. Uh, in which more symmetries are, are preserved and, uh, uh, and then broken, and in which the spectrum is actually considerably uh, simpler. So we hope that from the examination of the, of the one theory, we can get clues about some principles of the physical theory. Uh, the other advantage, the second one uh, that I'm thinking about here, uh, 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 is that in, in topological string, we are able to, to compute certain physical amplitudes of the real string theory. Uh, for example, uh, these are uh, uh, terms uh, of the effective four-dimensional theory, which depends uh, holomorphically on the moduli. Uh, for example, uh, through the superpotential, the prepotential, the gauge kinetic uh, function of n equal one and n equal two supersymmetric field theories, uh, and add to that that uh, a topological string theory counts naturally certain BPS states and is therefore ideally suited for computing the microscopic uh, entropy for extremal spin in five-dimensional black holes. It's also suited like for four-dimensional black holes, but that's another talk. We need to uh, like to introduce the OSV conjecture. So we'll talk a little bit about five-dimensional black holes later on. So 
So uh, this is why one uh, like uh, we care about uh, like topological string theory. Now, in topological string theory itself, uh, uh, there are actually two main approaches uh, for dealing for doing calculations and, and working in topological string theory on Calabio backgrounds. Right. So the first approach is called the topological AML. All right. Uh, if you guys wonder, yes, it is actually related to the type 2A theory because the passage from super string theory to topological string theory is done by like a topological twist. So the, the topological A model is the, uh, uh, it's like the manifestation of type 2A string theory in topological strings. But right. as you might, well, like you, you might have, you might guess, uh, we have also a topological uh, B model, which is also like the, uh, uh, the manifestation of type 2B and just like type 2a and type 2b are related by mirror symmetry topological a and model and topological b model are also like uh, uh, related by mirror symmetry so the topological a model has actually a, a great uh, relevance from a mathematical viewpoint so in the a model uh, the classical solutions around which the string path interval localizes are actually holomorphic maps from the Riemann surface of the wall sheet to curves of the Calabio target space, all right? And these are in satons labeled by, by the by genus, all right, J, of the holomorphically embedded curve and the degrees which count the number of intersection with the divisors of the Calabio. So uh, the mathematical tool actually to calculate the number of such maps is called localization makes use of the fact uh, that the amb uh, ambient space being the space in which the Calabio manifold is embedded admits a group action uh, in order to localize the path integral to fix points of the group action. Now, there are some disadvantages of this uh, A model, uh, uh, it, which is like it, it, it only provides solutions at the large volume point in the model space. So here comes the other guy, which is like the, uh, the topological B model. And this guy actually rests heavily on the use of mirror symmetry, all right? So how do we how do we work in the topological B model? Uh, we perform all calculations, right? in the mirror Calabio, knowing that the, uh, that there the classical solutions are just maps from the war sheet to points of the target space, which are much easier to control. Right? Then we translate the result by mirror symmetry to the original Calabio, where they can be interpreted and interpreted as a model results. And uh, the calculation on the, the B model sites uh, are not that difficult. They make use of the properties of the topological free energies uh, uh, around boundary divisors of the uh, mirror color mm -hmm. space where physical descriptions of the particle spectrum are available. And uh, such information can consist of the number and type of particles becoming massless of the relevant divisor, as well as phase transition going through an enhanced uh, symmetry point. All right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that's all for the for the for our in, little introduction here. So I'll go back like to the plan. So here, as I said, like we're talking about uh, the the about the physical aspect or like the physics line uh, be uh, captured by topological string theory. So uh, at the start, uh, we'll introduce type two supergravity where we compactify the 10 dimensional bosonic uh, uh, action down to four dimensions, all right? This way, it is possible to identify the four dimensional multiplets with the modular fields of the uh, uh, of the compactification manifold. Then we go here like to, uh, to the uh, description of gauge theories within the framework of n equal to supersymmetry. Uh, don't worry, like don't get scared for this word. It's all going to be really brief. So, uh, so we'll we'll talk about like uh, uh, the cyber written solution of the SU2 gauge theory. And uh, after we like review this construction, we'll talk about its embedding into string theory. And that's where actual topological string theory will be relevant. And uh, 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 we'll comment on how the topological strings capture certain non perturbative aspects of these gauge theories. And finally, like you can see here, the fourth. Uh, uh, the fourth uh, uh, paragraph is uh, about five dimensional, four dimensional, five dimensional supersymmetric black holes, their microscopic entropy, mm -hmm. and their embedding into string theory together with, uh, with a microscopic interpre interpretation of the entropy. So that's pretty much what we're going to see. 
So uh, let us start here. Actually, here I'm sorry, I did not write, uh, I actually copy paste this from another talk. So I did not actually write a little introduction for this uh, paragraph. Usually I do. So bear with me, I will, I will need to, to do that in talking. So let's start. So here we're gonna like uh, like see really briefly uh, like about the compactification uh, of uh, like uh, to n equal to supergravity. So as I said before, uh, superstring theory theories are actually only consistent as quantum theories are normally free in a ten-dimensional space time. So uh, uh, the perturbative description is given by a supersymmetric sigma model with target space at 10-dimensional manifolds, which actually can, split, can be split up to R13 cross M, all right, where M is actually denoted uh, by, the by the compactification space. So, uh, in the limit of large volume of M and small string coupling, the interacting theory captured by the sigma model reduces to supergravity. Uh, now, the non perturbative sector of string theory contains like solitonic states, which are D brains, and uh, they also admit a supergravity description in, 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 the, in terms of P forms, right? Uh, now, when we're talking about like uh, about like non perturbative aspects of string theory, it's still, still vaguely understood. The best thing we have till now is like F theory. So, uh, like in uh, in many applications, in many courses, in many like uh, uh, how do how do they, they do that? It, like so, it's convenient actually to consider first the supergravity limit of string theory and include then the non perturbative correction uh, corrections as a second step. So, uh, so he said here we'll describe uh, uh, the supergravity picture arising from string theory and its impact on uh, four-dimensional physics. So here we'll just I'll just focus on the bosonic sector of low energy effective actions of like type two and type two b. Uh, so this he will be dealing with type two and type two b supergravity in, in in ten dimensions. Both theories are n equal to supersymmetric. The only difference between these two theories is that like uh, we usually say that type two a is actually a non chiral theory and type and type two b is a chiral theory. Uh, actually, we can say if we want to use like some uh, uh, some uh, string theory words here, we can say that uh, one theory, in one theory, the gravitino multiplet has opposite chirality to the gravitino sitting in the graviton uh, multiplet. Anyway, so we'll start with the action of the, uh, uh, like the type 2a, so the bosonic action for the non chiral type 2a theory, which is so it's actually uh, the mass spectrum here has like the metric to this. people can see my uh, so it has like the, the metric uh, GMN it also has like the two form like B2 right the dilaton phi uh, we have like here uh, a one and a three form that are denoted like by A1 so A1 here and C3 all right uh, the fermionic components here will just follow by supersymmetry so no and uh, this is our bosonic action all right uh, here we have a this topological term, all right, we'll just ignore it because I just copy pasted this from another talk, right? So we'll just ignore this. Actually, in the literature, this is actually called the Chern Simon uh, Simon's term, all right? But it's not important for us, all right? So this is pretty much like the bosonic action of the uh, non chiral type 2a theory. Uh, for type 2b, for type 2b, sorry, we have this guy, all right? So it's pretty much the same right it's massless bosonic field are given also by the metric uh, gmn also we have like uh, the uh, two form b2 right the dilaton uh, here if you guys look with me right uh, in, if we want to speak in string theory terms we say like we see that this first part of the action is actually the same in the two theories so we say that this is actually called the ns and s sector the neuveschwartz sector right so these two theories actually they have the same ns and s sector but they uh, they differ in this part, which is like the RR sector, which is the remo mo sector, right? So they have like a, a difference here. So uh, they differ in like their, their RR sector. Uh, and uh, here for type 2b, the, the RR sector contains only even forms. Uh, so it means like uh, like the uh, type 2b action here contains only odd form field strengths, right? So this is actually basically what we have about like, uh, without like briefly the bosonic action for both type 2a and type 2b. All right, so now knowing like these two actions, we'll talk about the compactification to four dimensions. So we we'll start from a general viewpoint. So as I said earlier, like to, to compactify, we need there some some 
way to to uh, to work with. So uh, uh, one can choose, for example, the amount, as I said, the amount of a preserved supersymmetry. How do we do that? Because I just said, like, we choose the amount of supersymmetry, and then we put some conditions on the compactification on the uh, manifold. Sorry, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, hello. This is Hank. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, so in the previous slide, you had um, two different, you know, um, type 2A, type 2B, but in the mm -hmm. action in type 2B, there's no Chern Simons term. Is that intentional or is the Chern Simons uh, term still there? Yes, because actually I copy pasted this. Uh, no, actually, here you can see like that it also has like a topological term. But I just put like because I copy pasted this from two of my old talks. So in the in one of the mm -hmm. talks I had like this L topological, and I wrote actually this last time. So I kind of but these terms are not important for the talk. So right, uh, yeah. Because mm -hmm. What we're talking about uh, is like uh, just how to compactify. Uh, because really briefly, all right. So, mm -hmm. so these this two terms actually, uh, uh, which I'm not going to be talking about is these two actions actually written in the string frame. So in compactification, before we start like, uh, we have to do, before starting compactification, we have to move from the string frame to the Einstein frame. We do that by a will rescaling. And all these terms here, all right, other than the topological terms are like uh, uh, affected by that will rescaling. Uh, but I'm not gonna talk about that. I will actually be giving the okay. results just right away. So it's just, just that. So oh, and before you get going too fast again, uh, there is a question from the audience of what the different terms in this Lagrange are, or like in the action are. I actually uh, talked about that. So the we, I said, ah, oh, the different terms. So uh, here, actually, if we look at the, so I said that this is the NS Neuverschwartz Neuverschwartz sector. So what we have here, like, uh, is like, uh, well, we have the fields here. So the A1, I said like that, uh, we have like um, GMN metric, right? The two forms in field, the field here, we have the, it's a two form B2. We have the dilaton phi, all right? Uh, we have uh, one form and a three form that I denoted by uh, A1, or is A1 here and the C3 here, all right? Uh, the, the here, like uh, this is the fields that contains the forms, but uh, here, like it's the this is the kinetic term, right? Uh, actually, I will talk a little bit about it later. And this is the chern simmons term, or, and, and it's the same thing for the for the topological B theory. So this is the the first, if you can see, sector. You see, this is the same, and this is the uh, uh, this is the uh, Raymond Raymond sector. Okay, great, thanks. So we set in compactification. So I said, like, just like I said in the uh, uh, introduction, that we have like a ten-dimensional theory, uh, and uh, we have to compactify to a four-dimensional uh, to a, to a four-dimensional in a four in manifold. So I said, like, we can choose the amount of preserved supersymmetry, but I didn't say how to to say that. I said uh, I just say that to do that we will. And, and, and sorry, and the compactification manifolds just give us like the color of manifolds. So uh, to choose the amount of preserved supersymmetry, do that by the choice of holonomy of the internal manifold M. So the number of left uh, supersymmetries will actually be equal to the number of spinors, which can be chosen to be singlet under the uh, uh, the holonomy groups, the holonomy group. So what is a spinor? A spinor here is a irreducible uh, representation of this algebra, all right? And it has like a dimension, this dimension for an even D and uh, this dimension for an the odd, right? Uh, so I try to put like here, like uh, like a general rule. Uh, so uh, like a spinor can be real, complex, quaternionic. So it depends on the on, on uh, the dimension. So here we have like it's real if d is equal one to three modulo eight, complex if d equal zero, and uh, quaternionic if uh, d equal five, six, seven. So. Uh, here we see that a complex representation has twice as many degrees of uh, freedom uh, as a real real uh, representation, and a quaternionic representation has the same number of degrees of freedom as a complex uh, representation. Uh, this is used to constraints. Now, to see what happens when we compactify uh, 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 type 2 supergravity down to a lower number of dimensions, we can actually replace this space here like by uh, 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 R1, D1 minus one uh, across M, cross M, right? With M being the, the compact uh, 
to mention uh, this very university. So uh, here we have to consider how spinor like like uh, like of this algebra of this uh, this algebra here. How it decomposes under this maximum so, uh, 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 and the holonomy of M right, acts on the maximum of algebra, and each representation, right, which is invariant under its uh, action, will lead a new supersymmetry in the complexified uh, target space. So here I actually try to put two. So for if like for SO6, holonomy of M six ten here is the number of supersymmetries. So you have n equal eight supersymmetries in four dimensions. Uh, an example for this would be like the uh, the torus T6. Uh, for the second case, SU2, and it's holonomy of M SU2, we have n equal four supersymmetries in D equal four, right? Um, an example of this can be put uh, like uh, the target space uh, K3 cross C2. Uh, actually, that's uh, pretty relevant for the complexification. Okay, about that. And the example that is actually relevant for us is the S1 press, so Z2 cross uh, SU2 and SU3, which is n equal two supersymmetries in D equal four. And uh, uh, this actually comprises any Calabio manifold. And uh, that's what's going to be like relevant for our talk. Uh, so w w in the next session, actually, we're going to talk about compactification on uh, the Calabio manifolds. So now to do that, we start with the uh, by talking about the field content of n equal to supersymmetry in four dimension, and uh, we can say that this field context can be constructed from the multiplets of n equal one supersymmetry. All right, so an, uh, n equal to a uh, hypermultiplet is actually built from uh, two chiral multiplets, resulting in two complex scalars and two fermions. All right, uh, on the other hand, a vector and a chiral suitable field together give us a vector multiplet, right, and its field content being a vector. So we have two gauge in and one complex scalar. Uh, and uh, the n equal to graviton multiplet is actually the union of the n equal uh, one graviton and graviton multiplet. So I tried here to summarize like this everything here, like in the table, this table will be relevant for uh, some in the dimensions. Uh, so, so now we start, uh, after seeing this, we start the compactification. Of type 2a on the color view, right? Uh, so, I color view, I, I named it uh, y, right? So, what we want to do is that we want to identify the bosonic field content of the resulting theory with the bosonic fields presented in this table here, all right? So, uh, uh, in a reduction of a higher dimensional theory to a lower dimensional one, which actually in the course of the compactification, uh, we expand. Dimensional fields in terms of harmonics. Um, I'm, I'm so sorry to interrupt you, Snake, like this. Um, would you mind just fixing your mouth sort of constantly towards the microphone because half of the time it's cutting out and we are not hearing anything you say? All right, so actually, I'm gonna then just use the, the uh, I'm not gonna use my voice. Uh, so if I do this, like it's so right, do you guys hear actually? Yep, it's better. So, as I said here, so uh, when we, uh, I said like uh, when we want to compactify type two, like a view, a kind of color view manifold, right? We want to uh, to identify the bosonic field content with what we have actually here in the uh, with the bosonic fields that are present pre present here in this uh, in this table. So uh, uh, I said that this is actually denoted like known as the Kaluza claim, sorry, compactification. And uh, what we do is that we expand the higher dimensional fields in terms of the harmonic of the compact space uh, in order to keep only massless modes uh, uh, in the, uh, in the uh, effective theory. So here, what we do is that, like, uh, we expand uh, this in the like uh, the spirit of uh, in the spirit ten-dimensional fields that we've talked about here, right? Or so this all here, like the uh, the A one, right? The A one, the B two, and the C three, right? We expand them in terms of Calabio harmonic forms. This guy is here. Uh, so here, actually, we make a remark. Actually, told told like that. Uh, we did not get this result here, or this 
this results here from this action. So uh, actually, because as I said to as I said like to Hank, this is written in the string frame. So usually in complexification, before doing anything, we have to pass from the string frame to the Einstein frame by a well rescaling, and then from that uh, like uh, where, where the action is actually expressed uh, in the Einstein frame, and all these terms are actually uh, affected by the well rescaling, other than this topological term. From that new action, let's say in the Einstein frame, we actually get this. In this results, but I do not want to go to that because uh, that would take a lot of time. Maybe if people are interested in the future, we can do like a seminar about complexification details. So uh, here we have uh, C three is a three form, or right? B two is a two form. We have A zero, A one, uh, uh, like uh, A zero, sorry, A E one forms, and we have like the scalar fields here. All right, uh, we have uh, omega E here, which is a harmonic two form. All right, sorry. Here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have like harmonic three forms of the internal manifolds. Uh, so uh, uh, these actually, uh, these are not yet like all the fields uh, appearing in the theory. So they are also actually, in addition to this, some massless modes or that are actually associated with to metric deformation of the internal geometry. So since we have like uh, Calabio manifolds here, this uh, this massless modes are actually, these are color and complex structure, and uh, we denote them here by ZE, all right, and ZR. All right, so uh, 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 now this, if we combine, we start combining this, so if we combine like here the ZE and the scholar here, the BE, it gives rise actually to, uh, uh, to a complex field that I named here TE, all right? Uh, uh, and these scholars together uh, form with the one form here, uh, AE, all right? They form the bosonic content of uh, H1 and H2 multiplets. Uh, now, if we look at the, uh, the other guys, all right, so we have like what's left, we have ZA and these scholars, these two scholars, these two guys here, uh, uh, they form exactly the bosonic content of the n equals to hypermultiplet, which is like H21 plus one hypermultiplet. These guys will be relevant later for 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 actually pretty fun result. Uh, so this is this is briefly, really, really briefly like the compactification of type two A or type two B is the same thing, all right? Uh, uh, so like in order to derive the massless spectrum in the ten-dimensional field, we expand into Calabio harmonics again. Same thing for type two B, not from this action, all right? Same thing, we need to pass to the Einstein frame via the well rescaling, and then, right, we do like, we pass like to, we expand, actually there are more, much more steps in between, then we expand like into the uh, Calabio harmonics, and we find the, other than the results that we find like in the type 2a, I mean the terms, other than the terms that we find in type 2a, we have like this omega e tilde, actually, which is dual to this omega e here. Uh, we have like here the, the uh, uh, so, uh, and we have like, here, actually, I did not write it. I am sorry, actually, I did not write this. So, the bosonic fields here, this, this guy here, the DE, DE2 and the Rho E, all right, uh, are actually do one of another, all right? I'm sorry, I did not write that. And the one forms, all right, like, they are actually related uh, to each other by the electric magnetic duality. So, here I wrote EM, electric magnetic duality. So, now here we just have to consider half of this field. So uh, if we choose like this color fields like this rho e right here. So uh, if we choose the the rho e and the vector fields, sorry, here they are right, uh, uh, and we choose to be physical, right? And we combine these with the Calabio moduli, we see that uh, uh, that what is left is H11. Uh, like uh, we have H11 hypermultiplets, all right, and we have uh, so, uh, so H11 plus one hypermultiplets and H21 vector multiplets. Uh, so now this is also briefly like uh, the uh, like really really briefly like the uh, compactification of like uh, uh, type two B. Now the what we want to do is actually want to compare, all right, the the spectrum, uh, the type two A spectrum in four dimensions uh, in four dimensions with that of uh, type two B. And what we see, we see here that we have like the numbers of like hypermultiplets and vector multiplets of type two B and type two A are actually exchanged. All right, so uh, we have H11 vector multiplets, we have H21 vector multiplets, and we have like H21 plus one hypermultiplets, and we have H11 plus one uh, hypermultiplets. 
So actually, this is uh, the uh, this is a fun result. This is the supergravity origin of mirror symmetry. So we can say, if you remember, here I said like uh, complexification on E. So this actually is like uh, W. Uh, sorry, on W. So W can be like uh, defined as Y tilde, and Y tilde can be actually considered as the mirror of like mirror of like the color which is defined like this. So what we say is that type 2a compactified on y will be identical to type 2a compactified on y tilde. Uh, so this is actually, we see here that mirror symmetry actually pops up uh, while we're doing compactification. So the, the, the first, what we started with is a type 2a in 10 dimensions, and we compactify that to uh, like to a four on a four dimensional uh, Calabio manifold. And then type 2b uh, on 10 dimensions, and we compactify that into a four dimensional manifold. And we find that like the, ther the, the two compactified uh, theory are actually mirror to each other. Uh, now, it might seem like, it seems, I mean, it seems that like mirror symmetry is trivial because it pops up from, from compactification. So one can ask, is mirror symmetry a trivial statement also in the context, uh, the context of string theory, the full picture of string theory? Well, the answer is actually no. Uh, because uh, the uh, in the full string picture, these two modal space receive a quantum corrections, and thus it makes mirror symmetry a really really non-trivial statement. So uh, if if we want to like dive a little bit into this, uh, I actually didn't write it, but like uh, uh, I, we can say that like. Um, the vector moduli spaces, right? If we look at those vector moduli spaces, the type two to a side get quantum corrected by a world sheet in satons, while the type two b vector moduli space remains uncorrected, right? So, and this world sheet, uh, this world sheet in satons can actually be interpreted as BPS states that arise from uh, deep brain bound, deep brain bound, sorry, states which in turn have important application to non-perturbative non aspects of uh, string theory. So uh, uh, just for the people that might like want to work down this road, just know that like uh, uh, there is uh, an, uh, there is an extensive use of mirror symmetry actually to calculate the degeneracy of the specific BPS states. Uh, so. Hence, we will introduce now like the BPS states. So this is like a little, little, little brief motivation of uh, BPS states. Uh, as I said, also in the in the in the uh, in the introduction, that BPS states are actually a, a good tool to to test uh, the dualities that we have in, in string theory. So without further ado, let us talk about this. So BPS states here are like uh, uh, massive supersymmetric states, which play an important role in the understanding of like. Like I said in the introduction, in uh, of the duality that arises in string theory, and also the non-perturbative uh, nature of uh, string theory, because as I said, their uh, their their properties are protected against uh, corrections even in the non-perturbative regime. So here I'll talk really briefly about them without going into details. Uh, I will put like uh, a paper for uh, like uh, for more details, and if people want to dive uh, deeper into that. So we start here by considering a. Uh, Theory with n supersymmetries where n equal to r, right? For some r. So uh, now they diagonalize in the anti symmetric uh, central charge matrix, right? Uh, into blocks of uh, like uh, 2 plus 2. We have we obtain this z, right? Which is equal to this, right? For and uh, where z above, right? For above going from 1 to here are the real central charges. Uh, now uh, here, the only non-trivial supersymmetry algebra relation left is this guy, All right? So this is the only, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, is this guy, this guy, right? These guys are the creation annihilation operator. So the only, uh, the only non-trivial supersymmetry algebra left is this. Right. So if you look at this here, the left side, right? The left side of this uh, equation. Uh, here must be positive for any any unitary representation of the supersymmetry algebra, and this immediately right gives us the so-called BPS bound for the mass of the particle uh, uh, in the spectrum m superior or equal to the to z above. All right, so 
now we're going to see different configurations. Sorry. So for for the configuration, uh, configurations with like uh, Z ABA, oh here, sorry, it should be Z ABA, not just uh, not A. So Z ABA equal to M, the BPS bound is saturated and uh, one of the uh, super, uh, like the uh, superchargers, all right, either like, uh, like uh, this guy here, like Q A bar alpha plus or like Q A bar alpha minus, all right, uh, must vanish. So as a consequence here, we obtain uh, a shorter su supersymmetry representation. Uh, actually, in the literature, and I wrote, wrote it here, right, uh, what we have is called like the phenomenon of the multiplet short limit. All right, so uh, this, this is for this uh, configuration. Now for, for another configuration, if M equal uh, Z above for above going from R0 and M superior to Z above for other values of, of, uh, of uh, above, all right, uh, what we have is the corresponding super this dimension has like uh, this representation, has this dimension, sorry, and is denoted by, by this. So one on two uh, R0 BPS. So here I tried like to make uh, to make uh, uh, like uh, like a table which has like irreducible representations as function of the spin. So we have like spin uh, like uh, a spin inferior or equal to one, or right? and we have like uh, n equal to or right? uh, n equal to like uh, uh, BPS hyper, all right, and n equal to BPS vector. So for spin zero we have like two BPS hyper, uh, and the spin half we have like one, for spin one we have zero, and for spin zero we have like uh, uh, one uh, BPS vector, right, for half we have two, and for one we have one. So here what can I add more about like the BPS states because we're gonna move to, so uh, here actually the name hyper and vector, they arise from state counting, which shows that they have the same number of states as massless hyper and massless vector multiplets. Uh, what can I add here about this uh, is that like, uh, for example, for this, for this, for this configuration here, this condition where m equals z above, not z above, right, this will remain valid even in the strong coupling regime and will not actually suffer corrections as one does not expect short uh, multiplets to turn into full multiplets with the uh, states. So that's pretty much it about BPS states, so not really briefly. And uh, from this now, we have described four-dimensional supergravity, so we live a bit like this, this arena, right? And we turn to the uh, supersymmetry gauge series. So here, uh, we'll see that in string theory, there is actually a mechanism that, uh, that uh, makes it possible to decouple gravity from this theories and thus obtain a purely gauge theoretic description. So here, like uh, I will first describe the cyborg with the gauge theory sorry, in, in like really briefly as it gives like rise to many interesting features and then we'll say like it's embedded into string theory and that's where actual topological string theory, theory plays a role. So uh, we'll start with the cyborg with model or right, it's going to be really brief, start with the setup. So here we consider first uh, an n equal to supersymmetric young wheel theory in four dimension, and uh, with so uh, all right. So what I said here is like uh, yes. So I talked about like the mechanism that uh, in string theory where we are able to decouple gravity. So here we start like the cyber written model, and we consider uh, uh, n equal to super young wheels uh, uh, theory in four dimensions. So we assume that the gauge theory is SU two. With one vector, uh, with one vector super multiplets a, right? Uh, then the particle content of a, right, is according to actually this 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 guy here, right? According to this guy, right? The particle content of a will be here. Uh, it will be uh, given by an n equal one chiral multiplets of uh, of uh, whose components will denote by phi and psi, all right? And an n equal one vector multiplets so with components lambda and one gauge field uh, amu or, or amu, right? That's what said in English way. So the amu. Uh, here, uh, so what we have also, all fields here come in the edge of representation, right? So uh, now under the global symmetry S, uh, SU2R, all right, so the right symmetry of the bosonic fields, A mu and, uh, and uh, C are actually, uh, are singlets, right? So A mu here and C are singlets. And lambda and C, they form a doublet. 
Furthermore, like there is an additional U1 symmetry, right? Uh, uh, I did not actually talk about it here. Uh, so there is actually an additional U1 R symmetry that acts actually on this on these two fields like uh, phi, right? Phi and psi. Right, these two guys. There is an additional. I forgot to wrote that. Sorry, that acts on these two guys here. Um, but quantum mechanically, right? Uh, uh, this this air symmetry, right, is broken to its Z eight seven by an, an anomaly in the theory. Right. Let me just check because I'm hearing sounds. Right, everything's fine. I'm sorry, I'm becoming paranoid. Uh, so. Here, so I said, like in, in, in quantum mechanically, all right, there is like uh, the this air symmetry, right? It's kind of broken to its uh, Z eight subgroup by an anomaly in the theory we are considering. So uh, in our uh, like uh, in our uh, in the n equal one superspace formalism, we have this Lagrangian here, all right. So we have this Lagrangian where like f u is the uh, the prepotential, right, uh, and r r here. Oh, so sorry, uh, uh, is the uh, is the n equal one chiral multiplets and the n equal two vector multiplets? Ah, uh, right. This this a here, right? right? Uh, and uh, the scalar component of, of like this r uh, actually is going to be uh, denoted here by a small r. Uh, we will we'll see it later. Uh, so here, this prepotential, this prepotential f, right, gives rise to this. Uh, Color, all right. Color potential. Uh, what else do we have here? So, uh, and we have uh, also we have like this. Uh, 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 we have a D term that's actually that uh, sorry a super potential that I actually did not uh, include here. But like uh, uh, the D terms actually give rise to the to the following all right classical uh, classical uh, uh, potential. Uh, here we can say that the actually. Uh, if we want to like uh, give uh, uh, like uh, talk about this, then we can say that the SU two vector multiplets they contains uh, a scalar field, all right, with the with this potential v of phi, right, this function here. So uh, what does this tell us? So it tells us that classically the vacua of the theory are given by configurations where this uh, sorry where these two groups here or not two groups, so these two guys here actually commute. So uh, v equals zero for 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 these two guys in commuting here, right? Uh, so in our case here, like the gauge group is SU2, so we can actually write phi as this, right? Uh, sometimes in the literature, you can just find like phi equal a sigma to the power of three without uh, one and a half. So it's, it's just like, uh, it's not, it's, nothing is different. So uh, for uh, uh, non-zero uh, a, right, supersymmetry non-zero a, uh, here a is a complex parameter, right? Uh, a here actually, sorry, if I write like this, sometimes like this, plus I put like this little bar and then I put, it's just like uh, uh, in like a right, like the Russian way. So so like uh, Russians, they like to like to write like this. So it means a is a complex parameter, right? So that's what it means. So a is a complex parameter. Uh, uh, so here, what we see is that like SU two, right, acts by its whale group on the on the field a, and it sends it actually to minus a. And uh, we see that the gauge in equivalence vacuum are parameterized by the gauge invariant quantity, right, that we're going to call u, which is uh, a, uh, a to the power of 2 uh, uh, divided by 2, which is equal, actually, to trace of phi squared. This will, will play a role later. Uh, uh, so now, uh, for non zero A, right, for non zero A, like uh, uh, supersymmetry remains are unbroken, while the gauge symmetry is broken to U1 and the global Z8 symmetry is broken to Z4. Right? So this is pretty much really briefly the setup of like the uh, the cyber written theory. I think that there's nothing else left to be said. And let me check because I'm hearing some sound and I don't know if I'm in and out or like uh, oh, everything's fine. All right. Uh, so. All right. So this is pretty much the setup of like really really briefly of the uh, cyber written model. Uh, so now the solution. All right. So uh, the uh, uh, like Cyborg and Witten, I will actually uh, like uh, 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 like uh, put the paper that no, no, like written by Cyborg and Witten uh, later on in the uh, appropriate channel uh, for people that are interested. So, but briefly, like uh, Cyborg and Witten, what they did like is that they uh, they presented a solution to the effective infrared limit of the theory described by the Wilsonian action. 
right? That is, means that they have constructed the space of effective quantum corrective gauge in equivalent vacua and have deduced the particle spectrum for it. So the, the ansatz like of this uh, relies on three major considerations. So the first one is holomorphy, global symmetry is the second one, and the existence of a non-singular weak coupling limit, all right? So here, uh, all the quantities, all the quantities that are interesting for us, that are of, in, of interest, they can be dis deduced from the from this holomorphic prepotential from this guy from F. Uh, so the goal will actually be to compute its uh, full quantum corrected expansion. Uh, so uh, this actually has been done. So here, like the three level and one loop contribution add up to this. So the F one loop is equal to to this. All right. So we're uh, uh, here like lambda is the uh, dynamically generated scale, and all higher loop actually contribute contributions vanish. So uh, we have a logarithm here, all right. Uh, we have a logarithm here, and uh, this logarithm is the expert uh, uh, is responsible for the anomalous transformation behavior of U1 air that I talked about, but actually I did not write it. So, like, it's this logarithm that is uh, responsible for that anomaly, uh, the anomalous sorry behavior of that uh, U1 uh, air. So here. Uh, it's not. It's not it. We should add actually a term here, so it should be like f equal f one loop plus something, All right? So uh, which and that plus something. All right, those are corrections that arrive from in -satons. So this new term that we should have here, right next to the f one loop, which I actually wrote here, right? Uh, so uh, uh, like uh, must be invariant under the z four. All right, our symmetry, uh, which actually comes to the suggests this holomorphic uh, uh, this holomorphic part in the uh, in the ansatz right so we have f equal f1 loop plus this term here which is uh, like uh, uh, so uh, which is like uh, a term that like arises from in satons corrections so here like uh, uh, negative powers of k all right negative powers of k are absent because this would actually violate the third point here, the existence of a non-singular weak coupling limit. So we don't have any negative uh, powers of, of, of K. Uh, also here, the the FKs here, all right, uh, the FK are kind of, are non-zero, all right, uh, they're constants, because in a supersymmetric theory, in Satons only contributes uh, to the path integral through zero modes, all right? So we talked about like this FK, said so that this uh, FK guys here, like uh, they are like, uh, they, are, they are constant because in, in a supersymmetric theory, uh, insatons contribute to the path integral only through zero modes. Uh, so here, uh, Cyberg and Witten, what they did, right? they did use the insaton corrected prepotential, right, by looking at the metric of the space of the vacuum. Right, so uh, here actually, uh, so they actually uh, looked at the metric of the space of the vacuum or the, or the model space, all right, and they com and they computed its behavior around some specific points in the model space. So the metric is even better. So this is our metric here, the square. So uh, all right, uh, is a holomorphic function, all right, which is written also in terms of the prepotentials. And this this function here, if you can, guys can see this first first function here in the metric, all right, uh, which is uh, cannot be a globally defined smooth function, as it was seems to be positive positive definite. So as such. Uh, because it cannot be that it must have, it must have it, uh, singularities on the modal space, which lead to uh, uh, monodromies. Oh, for the people monodromy that like people that doesn't know what monodromy is, simply I would say that monodromy is like uh, the study of uh, uh, how mathematical objects like run around the singularity. All right, if I want to put it like really in, in, in a simple way. All right, so. Uh, so uh, because of the fact that this this guy here, all right, wait, wait, uh, this guy here should have say, uh, like uh, can uh, cannot be globally defined as a globally defined smooth function, which means that it has sing have singularities on the model space. This will actually lead to monodromies around uh, uh, singular points. So uh, a correct description of the metric, right, uh, using the variables uh, AD, right, this AD here, this is actually also written in terms of the prepotential, and uh, the variable A, right, is written by this. So this is the DS square, right, uh, uh, and uh, 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 now if we 
parameterize the model space with a variable u, right? Oh, sorry, here, let me, right? With a variable u, uh, uh, right, which corresponds actually to this u, where is it, where is it? Corresponds to this, and the trace of phi square. So it's, uh, if we parameterize the model space by this, by this, by this, with this variable u, uh, the functions here, uh, a d, right, and a, right, will transform non-trivially by going around singular points on the u plane. All right, and one can show that this uh, uh, monodromy transformation uh, 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 form a subgroup of SL two Z. Right, uh, uh, so we can ask, all right, what is the origin of these monodromies, and how can we compute them? All right, so. Uh, in the cyborg written paper, uh, they said that uh, the singularities, or right, the singularities, uh, comes from massive particle uh, particles of spin inferior or equal to actually here spin uh, inferior or, or equal sorry to one and a half, right, that become massless at particular points in the model space. Uh, add to that, these particles are not elementary. But they are, they are bound states and they correspond to monopoles and diodes. And these are BPSAs whose mass is given by this, this formula here, this guy M equal this, uh, right? So here we can, for example, take uh, the monopole, take the monopole, right? And we'll look at its behavior. So uh, uh, we take a monopole with mass AD, right? Uh, which is going to become massless in the point U0 of the plane, of the U plane, right? So AD of U0 is equal to zero. Uh, so uh, the Wilsonian effective action here will incorporate the effect of integrating out such a massless particle, and more precisely, using the one loop beta function, we can show that the magnetic. Oh, sorry, we can show that the magnetic coupling is this. All right, it's proportional to this. I did not show go to because it's too much details. All right. Uh, so now using uh, uh, like. Uh, the results, right? This, 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 all right, and uh, uh, the relation that exists between A and AD, all right. We can show that uh, by going in one loop around the point U zero, this guy here, around the point U zero in the U plane, A and AD transformed as such. So AD goes to AD, and A goes to A minus two AD. All right. Uh, so uh, actually, similar behavior uh, show up around two other points. I did not write it here uh, in the model space, which would be the we here we talked about the massless uh, di uh, mono monopole point, but we can also talk about the massless diamond point and the weak coupling point, which is u equal to infinite. All right. So uh, the picture that Sorry, we have can here. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, tau is the moduli parameter, right? Sorry, I didn't hear you. So in the previous slide, mm -hmm. you define tau. Tau is the moduli parameter in the moduli space, right? So it's sort of yes. uh, telling you where to move in um, uh, parameter space. Mm -hmm. So it defines like a complex um, structure. In, in fact, even more, right? Because you have a Kähler potential. Yes, yes. Yeah. So um, I'm just wondering, like, because typically when we um, do just regular CFT and then you compactify um, these moduli spaces, you get um gamma one instead of gamma two mm -hmm. so um yeah so the little group is gamma one on the torus so that sort of tells you that you have like a single ding twist but here you're sort of like doubling that twist right is that related to the fact that you have fermions or um uh, y yes yes it's actually related to the uh, but uh it's actually related to that but uh well the thing is uh since like uh, this is like an informal talk, so I just um, I did not talk about that. Like because okay. I assumed like that a lot of not because as I said like this is for uh, 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 like uh, late undergrad and early grad, so I did not do that. But yes, it's actually related <laughs> to the fact that that, that it's uh, it's related to fermions. Uh, okay. So mm -hmm. so you might see here that a lot of stuff might like be like really brief and like without a lot of details, but like uh, 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 so just because the objective and the, of the talk and like the the uh, audience of the talk, I assume that they might not know a lot about this. So I tried like to simplify as much as I could without uh, without losing the fundamental ideas. But yes, it's that mm -hmm. you're right. Yeah, I'm just connecting dots in my head. So. Okay, I'll, I'll shut up now. All right. So uh, here, 
Right, so we, we say it here, so like we have this picture here, this transformation where ID goes from uh, to, uh, from two ID and A goes to A minus two, I, uh, two ID. Right, so uh, I said like that, like, uh, I'm sorry, I did not write it, but like a similar behavior shows up in two other points, right? So the uh, uh, the massless dying point and the weak coupling point to U equal infinite. So actually here, this picture here, uh, this, this this picture here, right, it is 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 one of a Riemann surface, all right, with periods A and AD, all right. So uh, now, if we use the the symmetry, the, the uh, like the symmetries of the theory and the details of the monodromy behavior that we just described, right, this Riemann surface can be actually uh, uh, identified. Uh, sorry here, like this is A and A D, right? I just copy paste this from another talk that I did, and it, since it was in Russian, so this is A and A D. Uh, so like, uh, uh, so this Riemann surface can be identified uh, to be described by this equation, right? So this this equation, actually, this is the cyber written curve, which we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit later. We see here that we have two single points, so for x equal one and x uh, equal mi uh, minus one, which are like the uh, massless monopole and the massless diamond point. Uh, and this this picture actually solves the initial problem as deducing the prepotential associated to the model space of the uh, Riemann surface, which is all right equivalent to computing the in Satan corrected holomorphic for a function f on the n equal to theory. So uh, that's pretty much about really briefly. I am sorry, like I know, like that there is a lot of details about this, uh, but that's pretty much like really brief, briefly, uh, like the uh, the idea behind like uh, the cyber. Uh, the solution of the cyber written uh, model. So uh, right now we will pass to like it's uh, it's embedding into string theory, and, and I'm not gonna lie, this uh, this part was actually really hard to simplify. I did my best, and I, I know like there is a lot of details here and stuff like that. So so bear with me, please. Uh, so here, like uh, the cyber written SU two gauge theory can be embedded as a, like in, into string theory in the sense that it can be obtained in a certain limit uh, from a Calabio compactification. So uh, the main idea of this, all right, uh, can be uh, traced back to the observation that type two A compactification over K, K three fibration. So we talked about K2, uh, type two A compactification. Uh, color view manifolds, but that's not it, right? There, there, are, there are other compactifications. So, uh, uh, like we have type 2a compactifications over uh, K3 fibrations, which is like a K3 surface over like a uh, 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 fiber over P1, or just let me check because I hear sounds and I want to see if like or everything's all right. So, so, uh, uh, so the idea comes from. Uh, uh, can be traced back to the observation that type 2a compactifications over k3 fibrations uh, 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 in that compactification ADE singularities of K3 lead to an enhanced gauge symmetry of ADE type. So uh, for the people that don't know what is ADE, uh, so uh, ADE uh, refers uh, like to, um, uh, to to the ADE classification, which one refers to the simply laced simple uh, Duncan diagrams and uh, and uh, corresponding Lie algebra and Lie group, right? And it also refers to finite uh, a finite subgroup uh, gamma of S. Q2, uh, which is related to orbifolds, right? Which is like uh, 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 like manifold with singularities. So, uh, and ADE gauge theories means that the gauge group is an ADE group. So, in a simple way, that's like uh, that's what ADE means here. Uh, so, uh, as I said, like. Uh, the main idea can be uh, traced back to the observation that type 2 AD, that type 2 A compactification over K3 vibration in that compactification AD sing, ADE singularities of K3 lead to an enhanced gauge symmetry of ADE type. The reason is that the uh, uh, two brains of type 2A wrap, uh, wrapped around vanishing two cycles leads precisely to precisely to the missing states expected for gauge symmetry enhancements. Uh, so in the case of SU2, Theory: The geometry of the Calabio will consist of a base. Right, we will have like here a base P1, uh, uh, right, with fiber in the singular limit uh, C2 over Z, Z2. Right. Now, if you blow up this guy again, uh, uh, for people that may might not know, right, uh, the blowing up or blowing up is. Uh, 
uh, is it's like a, a type of geometric transformation actually that replaces a subspace of a given space with all the directions pointing out to the sub subspace. So I, I hope it, it makes sense. So so, uh, uh, so blowing up this uh, this guy, the SU2 over Z2, we see that the geometry locally contains a fibration of, uh, of P1 over P1. I'm sorry, I'm actually hearing sound. Uh, so uh, blowing up this guy here, this uh, C2 Z2, right, uh, we find, uh, we see that uh, the, ge the geometry locally contains a fibration of P1 over P1. Uh, uh, here, uh, and the here, actually, I am sorry, I did not talk about this, but if we go back like to the cyber grid model, right, there's something that I left out and I just I just realized that, uh, which is like the W, or right, these this two guys, right, the, w, the, the W plus and minus. So this, the W plus and minus, uh, yes, this uh, bosons actually, uh, uh, so how can I say so, uh, the, the, the U1 vector multiplets, right, uh, they lead to the W plus plus minus bosons that actually becomes massive through the Higgs mechanism, all right? Uh, this is in the cyber grid model, right? So here they appear when we want to, 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 to embed the model into string theory, they kind of appear. So I'm sorry, I actually, I actually forgot to mention that. Uh, so those, those two guys actually, uh, the, the, this W plus and minus, all right, will correspond to the, to two brains wrapped around the P1 fiber and their mass is proportional to the area uh, of the two sphere. All right, furthermore, we have here like this, this uh, one J here is the uh, uh, J is the J square is the coupling constant, right? So uh, uh, one uh, one on J square is actually proportional to the area of the base of the sphere, uh, 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 and as I said, J is actually the coupling constant of the gauge theory. Now, uh, knowing this. Uh, to decouple, uh, like how to decouple gravity and obtain a pure gauge theory. So uh, uh, geometrically, all right, this is realized by sending the size of the base, right, that I denoted here by T bait, right, or T, T bait, right, uh, uh, like the size of the base that denoted uh, like uh, by T bait to infinity, all right, and the size of the P1 fiber, all right, uh, uh, denoted by like Tf to zero. So, to say finite, to, to actually obtain in Satan's contribution the potential this guy here, uh, in, in Satan's like here, contribution in this prepotential goes to zero. All right? So, uh, uh, I guess like that's it for this. So now we can like, uh, because to this point I did not actually speak of topological string theory. I'm sorry, I'm hearing sounds, so... <laughs> Yeah, it's a microphone again that's cutting out. Right, well, uh, is, it, is it fine right now? Seems to be. All right. Uh, so, uh, till this point, I actually did not speak about like the topological string. So, this is here where topological string like come to come, come to action, right? So, uh, now, uh, what is the use of topological string here? Well, the genus zero topological free energy that is denoted here by this guy. F0, right, uh, includes all in Satan's correction of the type 2a vector model space, all right? And due to uh, mirror symmetry, it can be computed, like we said in the introduction, computed classically in the mirror manifold, and then translated back to the type 2a side, right? So uh, as it turned out, right, like uh, uh, in the local limit, right, we are employing uh, the mirror manifold is actually characterized by a Riemann surface, right, which turned out to be exactly the same as the cyber witten curve, right, this guy here. So, uh, therefore, right, the genus, uh, or is it, all right, so, uh, which means that, like, the genus zero topological string free energy contains all in Satan contributions of the gauge theory, and the, this result can be used, like, to obtain uh, uh, systematic non-perturbative corrections to quantum field theory. And now, 
uh, I will talk about, I did not write this, but I will say it like really briefly, right? Uh, so uh, this actually can be generalized. Uh, uh, so we can generalize like this setup that is presented, that was presented here. Now, apart from going to higher gauge groups, uh, like we can do something else, so, uh, uh, which is like to couple the gauge theory to measure. And this is done by including hypermultiplets in the uh, adjoint uh, or in the fundamental representation. And geometrically, the inclusion of uh, our hypermultiplets uh, in the adjoint, uh, uh, in the adjoint or it is engineered by fibering ADE singularities over a complex curve of genus R. Right, but that's outside of the scope of the of this stuff. So just as a as, as a remark. So uh, with this, right, we shall leave now the path of the pure gauge theories uh, and return to the supergravity picture because it is the correct framework or like arena or whatever for uh, 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 analyzing the theory of black holes. So uh, now. So the point of view of, uh, of, uh, of uh, topological strings, uh, this means including the higher free energies uh, uh, that I denoted here by Fg of Te, all right, as this corresponds correspond to the following F term in the effective four-dimensional and equal to supergravity to so this. So here, uh, R plus is actually the self-dual part of the uh, Riemann tensor, and F plus is the self-dual part of the gravity photon field strength. Uh, now the coupling, this coupling here, these guys here, the Fg of Te, they depend on the vector moduli arising from compactification of type 2a string theory on the Calabio manifold. So uh, the general rule to compute the FJ, right, is actually really similar to what we just saw in the cyber written model. Hence, that's why I actually put them one after the other. Uh, this, this guy here, right, uh, uh, the, uh, the, these terms, they arise actually in the Wilsonian effective action by integrating out massive states. Right. However, like on certain points on the modal space of the Calabio manifold, some of the states integrated out, they become massless and they lead to singularities in the effective four-dimensional theory. Uh, right. And in the case of the topological string, these are actually BPS states corresponding to deep brain bound states. Now, a knowledge of this guy, this FG, this FG of TE, uh, of the expansion of the uh, of the FG of TE around singular points in the modular space and the on, of the monodromy of the periods, uh, there can be restrictive enough to fix the FG completely, right? And uh, this has actually an important application for the theory of black hole uh, to which we shall turn next. And we're just going to speak about that really briefly because also this also can be like the, the uh, uh, the content of a really detailed talk of, of uh, two hours or more. So we'll start uh, with uh, uh, black holes in four and five dimensions. Uh, all right, uh, let me drink really quick because I'm getting. All right, so we start like with uh, black holes in four and five dimensions. So now, uh, as I said in the in the introduction, a central goal uh, like uh, of string theory is to provide a quantum version of general relativity. And an immediate application and cons uh, cons cons consistency check uh, of such a theory would be like the counting of the microscopic uh, 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 entropy black holes, which means like providing a quantum explanation of the Bekenstein Hawking entropy formula. Just let me check the sounds here. I don't know if like. Uh, I'm all good, I think. Right. So, as I said, like, so. Uh, 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 like, uh, which is an immediate application and consistency check of, of, of the theory would be counting the microscopic entropy of the black holes, which is providing a quantum explanation for the Bekenstein Hawking entropy formula. Uh, well, this has been already achieved by like for extremal black holes, which are like charged black holes with their massive, uh, uh, with their mass uh, equal in their, their uh, like charge. Uh, and uh, this one of the major, this was actually one of the major breakthroughs of string theory and his work of uh, Vafa and uh, the other guy, uh, Strominga, Strominga, right? So Vafa and Strominga. I will actually also put that paper like in the appropriate channel later. So uh, here first we start by reviewing the classical geometry of like the uh, uh, 
uh, Reissner North Storm Black Hole, right? Uh, which is a time independent spherical symmetric solution of the Einstein gravity coupled to electromagnetic field and uh, uh, the uh, Solution of the metric and vector field is as follows, all right? So we have ds squared is equal to this. Uh, so uh, uh, Q, uh, uh, a new, of course, there are like the space and components of the vector potential. Q here, like the Q, this guy here, uh, denotes the charge of the solution. And here we have two coordinates, uh, coordinate singularities. Uh, so we have like at like, uh, 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 so we have at R equal plus, this is the outer horizon, and this is the inner horizon. Uh, so, uh, so we have R plus R minus is equal to this. All right, let me check just because I'm actually, I don't know, I'm reading the right. I keep hearing sounds, so I get paranoid. I don't know anymore what, if I'm there or not. So, we have like so here we have like this this for the uh, inner and the outer uh, horizon right where the and the event horizon is given by the uh, outer horizon for r, r equal r plus so when we have m right equal this so uh, q on the square roots of, of j n right uh, it means that r plus uh, uh, like uh, coincide with the r minus right and the and the black hole in such case like the black holes are called like uh, extreme so a b h is for extremal black holes uh, all right uh, now such a solution in into into supergravity is called bps as the charge they correspond to central charges of the symmetry algebra uh, and we can see it like this this kind of black holes the black hole right is completely characterized by its, its charge right now uh, uh, when we look at another, uh, like at spinning black holes, all right, with angular momentum, the situation is slightly, slightly different. So here, like supersymmetric configurations, uh, uh, like configurations which preserve half of uh, the supersymmetry, are achieved for this, for this, for this, this m equal uh, q on uh, on on uh, j, right? Uh, uh, for arbitrary values here, for I did not write it, but it's for arbitrary values, arbitrary values of g. All right, so, uh, however, the extreme limit for a spinning black hole is actually g square, right? Uh, g square equals this, so m square minus uh, uh, q square divided by gn, and therefore the solution does not have any unbroken supersymmetry. Now, this is in four dimensions. If you lift the situation to 5D, right, rotating extreme black holes, uh, uh, black hole solutions have been constructed, which do have unbroken supersymmetries. Right? And the metric of a rotating black hole with uh, one half of the supersymmetry of n equal to supergravity in 5D is exactly this. Right, so this is our ds square in 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 five D. Right uh, here, one sees that the uh, rotating solution near the horizon, right, like like near the uh, near like the when r, r square tend to 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 mu, right. The metric does not actually split into a product space because there are no there are non diagonal components, right? So there are non diagonal components. Furthermore, the metric of the three sphere is actually distorted. And we have this. So we have uh, we have this R zero uh, 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 like uh, omega three G. So we have these guys and the uh, and the uh, solution right for the uh, right here and like the uh, uh, the volume of the three the distorted trees for defining the area of the horizon of the rotating black hole. So we have this right. So the A G is equal to this. So the two P square root of R zero six minus G square. Now. Uh, in order to do like the Bacon, Bacon saying Hawking entropy, all right? Uh, so SBA here is not a SB, it's entropy of the Bacon, Bacon saying Hawking entropy, right? Uh, so to, to deduce that, right, uh, which is like equal to this, right? Uh, A divided by 4GN, uh, one, we should first fix the value of R0. Right, so first we fix the value of R0. To this respect, how can we do that? Like, we use like a really, really, really important property of black holes, uh, of uh, such black hole configuration, which is the fact, and I did not go into details uh, into this, and I'm sorry, like, if like you guys see that there are some details left out, but like, it's the fact that extremal, supersymmetric black holes behave as attractors. All right, so here ESBH is for extremal supersymmetric black holes behave as attractors. All right, so uh, that is model 
take fixed values at the horizon, which depend only on the charges and not on the values of the middle at infinity. Add to that, the area of these black holes can be found by extremizing the value of the central charge in the model space. And now, uh, uh, using like this attractor mechanism, we can derive the following relation, right? So this S equal to P, the square root of uh, Q to the power of 3 minus uh, uh, G square, right? Uh, Q is like the, this is Q, this guy is the gravity photon charge of the black hole. Uh, here I should also mention that uh, this entropy, right, uh, is only valid in classical regime. All right, uh, this actually this result uh, receives uh, further correction from higher derivative interactions according to Walt's formula. Uh, I will put like the, for people that are interested and want to go in details in this, like the, uh, the paper for that. So with this, we pass like to the interpretation of the entropy in the context of string theory. All right, so uh, now in order to do that uh, and to present a microscopic interpretation for black hole entropy, First, there is the first thing to do is to embed the supergravity picture into string theory. Uh, so, for in the case of five-dimensional black holes, here I'm not going to be talking about four-dimensional black holes because, it, uh, like, I need to introduce the OSV conjecture and like, and it has. So, I did not want to do that. There's a lot of uh, blah 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 in there. So, it's outside of the scope of this talk and the audience it's meant to. So, uh, but for the case of five-dimensional rotating extremal black holes, uh, like uh, embedding like uh, uh, supergravity picture into string theory. Uh, like the corresponding supergravity solution is obtained by compactifying here M theory on the Calabio threefold. All right. Uh, so the black hole will be characterized by its charge Q, all right, and uh, by, by circle and uh, the angular momentum G. So let's say we have like SU2 uh, left here, which is included in SO4, uh, the uh, angular momentum G. So it's going to uh, like the black hole after this compactification will be characterized by Q and the angular momentum. Now, microscopically, if you. Dimensional black hole with a membrane membrane charge Q, right, uh, is engineered by wrapping empty brains around the around the two cycle Q, right. This result, uh, the result of this in five dimension is a supersymmetric spectrum of BPSH, uh, BPSH, sorry, which are labeled by Q, and their spin content, all right, is 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 like uh, GLGR. Or right, GR. Uh, here we have like we can like uh, we can say like that we have to some over GR with like some kind of like the insertion. Anyway, uh, we finally get the results. Uh, the resultant spectrum for the membrane charge as this. So RQ is equal to this. Uh, here, uh, oh, I talk, I forgot. Here, they did not write it. I'm sorry. So this this guy here, this term the E. Here, uh, actually, it encodes the spin content uh, uh, GL. All right, uh, so I did not write it. I'm sorry. So here we have like this guy, the NRQ. All right, this guy. These are the <coughs> the Gopakumar uh, Rafa invariants. All right. So if you guys like uh, uh, saw like the last paper that I uh, that I put in the paper channel of the server, I actually uh, put the paper that talk about the large end duality in topological string theory, or like they call the Gupta Kumar Vafa duality. And this guy, like the, which is equivalent, like like to to the equivalent of ADS CFT in topological string. And this Gupta Kumar Vafa invariants they play uh, an important role there. For us, it doesn't matter. What matters for us is that they can be computed uh, uh, like uh, by topological string and can be extracted by the knowledge of uh, the free energies of genera uh, between R and Z. So now for a given charge, right, Q, there, there are only finitely many non-zeros uh, and RQ. So that's pretty much what we need to know about this in this guy here. So uh, here we can write down like the following generating function for the supersymmetric degeneracy of uh, BPS states with uh, membrane charge Q as follows, well, right? Like this. So sigma uh, QG, all right, is equal to this. So uh, uh, from here, like uh, uh, the we can extract actually this sigma sigma qg, right? And uh, when you extract it, we find that sigma qg is equal this here, where the j here is equal to gl, right? And it's also written in terms of the Kupa Kumar Rafa in invariance. Uh, now we know that like the uh, entropy, uh, the black hole entropy is given by the logarithm of uh, the number of microstates, right? So we arrive at the that 
SQG, all right? So the, the entropy is equal to the logarithm of sigma, uh, uh, of, sorry, omega uh, QG, all right? Of omega QG. Uh, for, uh, uh, so here, like, and this should agree with the microscopic result in the large, in the large shares limit, Q superior to one and uh, Q superior to G, and you should agree with like the Bekenstein, uh, the the Bekenstein Hawking formula. Uh, and with this, we like I we fin I finish my talk. So I hope like uh, I was able to touch the public that I was <laughs> that the talk was meant to. So is there any remarks or or, or questions or whatever you guys are interested in? We can talk about that. Uh, just a big thank you. I mean, that that was I'm really was sorry for that. I'm really you. sorry to my internet. I don't know what's happening. But it's not that so, like, sorry about that. Okay, that's great. Um, so I do have uh, a couple questions. Uh, let me just clap. Well, not questions, but I do want some uh, some of your thoughts on some of the topics I'm interested in. But um, I want to wait until the very end uh, and save time for like the uh, undergrad students to ask questions. So just just uh, the question: Are there like uh, topics like about this talk, or like I mean, I guess interested in classification specific, uh, like uh, of uh, so uh, because you know here it's pretty late. So, uh, if we yeah, can, yeah. like, uh, it's still like me and my partner, like, we need, like, to, because tomorrow we have, like, 48. So, if we can, like, uh, wrap up the questions, if there is, like, some big discussion, right? On, like, we can talk in the channels, like, uh, since yeah, like yeah, I understand. Like, if it's too long, then we can defer it later. But, yes, uh, I tried like to give like as many times as I could because I understood that my GMT plus five time is actually not since I knew that a lot of people are from North America. So I tried like to give uh, uh, like uh, like the a good time that will be also like uh, convenient for people in North America. So right. but of course, yeah, a little bit late here. That's specifically yeah. tomorrow. So. Okay. Okay. <sighs> Uh, are there any questions from the audience? Doesn't seem like it. Um, okay, so I guess I'll start. Uh, I want to get your opinion on, uh, do you know if people study three copies of EA heterotic strings? Oh, yes, three copies of EA. Well, uh... Uh, I, I, I'm not sure, you know, I need to ask because uh, mm -hmm. my work, my work specifically is what we do in the, with my supervisor is that uh, we study like uh, the relation between topological string theory and knot theory. So like, mm -hmm. uh, as uh, there is actually not talk about it here, but there is a, uh, a uh, really uh, uh, like interesting relation between like, uh, uh, like the manifestation of the dualities, like uh, of like uh, super string that manifest themselves in like topological string theory and like uh, and not theory. So that's that's mm -hmm. that's so there's like a relation with the Humphrey like of polynomials, the 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 invariance of like not polynomials and stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't know to what extent like if people are like uh, working on the theoretic string theory or sorry. Uh, wait, should I first stop the stream or like? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can stop the screen share. Just, so, yeah. so though, uh, maybe I guess, but I can ask. I mean, the people in uh, I know that the people either in our lab or in the Steklov Institute like uh, work a lot on that. But to what extent? I might not give you the best answer. Oh no! Yeah, yeah. that that's okay because it does seem. Um, because what I know about three copies of E8 um, phases is that if you have SPT phases and you stack them by, uh, you know, just tensoring the, uh, the, um, the, the invariance or whatever, then what happens with E8 phases is that suddenly they're not associative. Like the, uh, if you just try to permute, um, you know, you, you have S3, the permutation group, if you just try to permute these stacks, Suddenly, you're not able to uh, actually have an associative um, 
SPT phase, but that's like a completely topological thing, right? Um, a completely TQFT thing. I'm just wondering, like, if people are studying, you know, in, in the same um, context of three copies of E8, but in the context of um, string theory, and see what kind of um, interesting, you know, Kela geometric stuff or complex geometric stuff. I can actually ask, like, um, I know like that, I mean, I'm pretty sure like some people like in the Stekulov Institute, like they, mm -hmm. they must, or like, or some like Landau Institute, like, uh, so I can ask like uh, people that, that, or, that if like some people work in that and like, uh, and then see like what are like the, but uh, I, E8, E8 string theory is something that actually I did not touch a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, my, uh, like, so mostly like the guys that we talk a lot about in topological strings are like uh, uh, type 2A and type 2B, because that's the topological, so for example, like, uh, we have like this, the, 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 the those uh, dualities, they can like uh, uh, manifest themselves through a chain of dualities, right? And right. The, the topological A and the B model already play an important role, either like through a chain of dualities or through a web. Of the houses, right? So mm -hmm. that's like the most thing that I'm that we're focusing on right now. Uh, E eight E eight is just like what I did in courses of string theory, mm -hmm. like, but never like went too deep into that. I actually did not even mention it. I mentioned in my talk heterotic string or E eight E eight. So like I just didn't even mm -hmm. want to put it like as a, as a, because uh, so that's that's so I can ask if you want like uh, like for specific information and like uh, get back to you on the server or in private messages about that. No, yeah, that'll be very useful. Like especially if you can get your hands on um, like resources, like yes. articles. Um, that would be very useful, but like I'm not expecting much, right? Because yes, even yes. in the TQFT context, the three copies of E8 stuff is sort of it's still very um, recent. Like it's a recent work by um, I, th I think it was Teal and Davide that they they did something with three copies of E8, but uh, and, and even in the TQFT context, it's still not very uh, understood, very well understood. Um, but yeah, I mean. Um, that would be great if people are looking at it from the string theory perspective and you know i'll, yeah. def I'll definitely be interested yeah, yeah so, so I, will, I will actually look and like uh, uh, see so for example us right now are we are we uh, are we doing like is like uh, uh, what i'm working on like uh, recently a lot actually with with vasilia a little bit because that's uh, because as it started, I, was mm -hmm. not, I did not have a good like background in my theory so he was the, mm -hmm. the guy that actually uh, uh, like helped me so for example um, uh, the kind of like uh, dualities for example mirror symmetry uh, mm -hmm. like or the like how we how those dualities in topological string theory they 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 they, they, they react so for example uh, we have like churn simon theory right mm -hmm. which is a large end duality that I that I posted about, like which is a uh, Gopakumar Vafa uh, duality, is dual to type A on the resolved conifold, which itself is dual to type B on the mm -hmm. uh, mirror of like uh, of the Calabio or, or the manifold where A is on, and type B on that the manifold is also dual to the matrix mode. And so this mm -hmm. is like the, the way like uh, that we talk about that. So uh, for example, that, that that little part of type B on Y, which is dual to the matrix model. So of course the matrix model is a zero dimensional U and pure gauge theory. And uh, it is associated with a function of like uh, remission matrix M and uh, uh, like uh, the partition function of the matrix model is like, uh, because of that, the duality is a path integral in the invariant uh, uh, of the invariant function of all possible configura configurations of the Hermitian matrix modulo UN transformation and mm. uh, so that's uh, that's how we we, we we work about that I talked a little bit like also about the Gori Vafa conjecture we work a lot on that which actually generalized that uh, Gupa Kumar Vafa duality uh, by insertion of, of brains because uh, Gupa Kumar Vafa duality does, doesn't take in consideration brains in the type topological uh, AMO right so there's a generalization which is called the Oguri Vafa which correspond like to the insertion of uh, loops in the Turing symmetry of three sphere, and uh, and like as Witten showed that uh, the VEV of a Wilson loop evaluated uh, evaluated in the fundamental representation of U N in the Turing symmetry can be identified with a Humphrey. That's where actually the the relation between the not 
Well, no theory and topological theory come from. So, uh, uh, so this is actually where we, where we dive in a lot and what we study. And, uh, and so this relation between no theory and, and topological string, I'm still learning because, uh, I mean, me, I, I had like, uh, like uh, as I said, like I didn't have a good background in no theory and stuff like that. So I'm still like learning, but this is like, let's say like the uh, heart of my work. So, mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's a little bit of classification too, like a uh, little bit, not, yeah. not as much as you, I think, but like uh, <laughs> so that's what we do in, in all day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I mean, yeah, we're all learning. Um, at the end of the day, I'm just more familiar with the uh, the TQFT side of things. So, like when you said that you, you're, uh, you know, inserting brains into the, um, into the string theory, um, yeah, what that sort of brings to mind for me is these um, defect colorings in the TQFT, where you have. Um, where you not just color the Wilson lines, right? You, you yeah. color, you, you have like Wilson surfaces and um, and that sort of tells you that, okay, you have um, these co-dimension co one defects um, in your manifold, in your three manifold. Yeah. Let's say if it's plumbed, but um, right. Yeah. Uh, and because like that defines like a coloring on your stratification, it doesn't define coloring on the knots or, or the braids or whatever. So like um, it's kind of difficult to write down an actual state sum. Well, um, technically, given the stratification, you can write down a state sum. But like what I'm saying is that it's quite difficult to um, relate that state sum to actual knot invariants or ribbon invariants. For example, if you categorify knots, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, and that's definitely uh, one of um, my major research interests is to actually know how to construct um, these um, uh, Vasiliev or um, Hovnov um, in, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in, in the context of, for example, if you insert boundary conditions into your TQFT or um, into your string theory, and I think mm -hmm. that's a topological string theory. But uh, yeah. yeah, I think that I think that's extremely worthwhile to go down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I have a funny story actually about Vasilia. Uh, when I went like so, when I moved to Moscow uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, last year, I actually because I I needed like to take like courses on uh, like seminars on like no theory. So I saw like that uh, he was given like some seminars in the independent uh, uh, like uh, Moscow uh, faculty. So I went there before so I could introduce myself. The courses are for free, you know, like the. So anybody oh, can tell, mm -hmm. yes, uh, the Russian system is like uh, the courses, anybody can drop in, right, from <laughs> any institution and can like uh, just put your name, all right, or introduce yourself to the professor. So like they mm. know, like, and that's it. Like whether you Fantastic. are from HSE, whether you are from MGU, whether you are from M MIPT, it doesn't matter. You just come and drop in. So I went mm. there with my really rusty Russian and I told him like, uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm like uh, doing my postdoc in HSE in this laboratory, blah, 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 blah. So I want to learn more about the Vasiliev invariance, <laughs> all right? <laughs> But yeah, yeah, that's uh, uh, did he, oh, sorry, did you cut off again or? I, my internet is like, uh, I, don't, I don't know, we have a good internet here. <laughs> uh -huh. 100 megabytes, right? Like it's really good, right? We live in a good part of the, because I moved from Moscow, I live in a Siberian city now. So we live oh, in a good okay. city, right? like, internet is good. Like uh, I have a, like 5G on my phone and stuff like that. But today, like, <laughs> It never happened. So, yeah, I, I think it's a bandwidth issue. Yeah, there's too many people here. Next time I will, I will actually try to to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, uh, no problem. I mean, um, if you can upload the slides, that'll be really uh, that'll be great. Upload the slides, so I guess like for now we'll leave you because here it's already like eleven and it's so much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you guys. No problem. Yep. Thank you guys.
okay. uh, here. Sorry, it was a little bit like early in the North American side, but that's the best I can do next time for another talk. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, let's let's all give uh, a round of applause to Snake. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Bye. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. I'll see you. Goodbye. All right. Stopping the recording.